We're back again. One more round. Actually, one more race for round number one in the NASCAR 2024 playoffs. Bristol night race. That's awesome. It's one of the best races of the year. And uh, we can't wait. So that's going to be this Saturday. Hopefully the weather will be nice. It's, it's actually been raining. We've got this, you know, that system that came up from the East Coast uh, that is uh, putting some rain in our area, including Bristol. But that's only going to be for the next couple of days. So hopefully we'll have good weather. Because what we don't want is a Saturday night Bristol race postponed until Sunday afternoon. That is the absolute worst you could possibly imagine. And it's happened more times than I can count, unfortunately. Yeah. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Check the weather while we're at it. Uh, see what the deal is. But we're here to preview the race coming up on su on Saturday night at Bristol. We're going to go over the odds. Uh, we're going to go over, of course, our, our top uh, selections. Uh, then a little bit later on, if you're an F1 fan, we're going to update what's going on in uh, the F1 playoffs, even though they've got a long way to go there as well. What happened last week and what's coming up this week in Singapore. So that's what's uh, on par for us here today. And taking a look at the forecast, it looks like Saturday night should be fine. No rain in the forecast the rest of the week once you get past the rain tonight in my area and it's usually the same for bristol so that's good news all right so Excellent. first let's talk about what happened last week uh very uh a lot a lot to uh, kind of um uh break down here because of the fact that on on one hand it was a really uh you know, it was it was an exciting type of race because you didn't know what the hell was going to go on uh, from lap to lap, especially with those restarts. And early on, it started so soon. And just like last week, you know, Larson getting in trouble. This week, Blaney gets in trouble. Hamlin trouble. Byron gets in trouble late. I mean, it was just crazy. Um, and then at the end, uh, Chris Buescher made a fan uh, out of me for life after what he did to uh, Van Gisbergen. Because we've talked about this, talked about this two years ago in the Chicago race, or last year in the Chicago race, that this is this is exactly what Justin Haley should have done to Van Gisbergen. He should have played tough, uh, and he didn't, and it cost him the race. Um, Chris Buescher, he played tough, and he, and and look, Van, I, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with Van Gisbergen because he's a he's a he's uh, you know he uh, if he was in the series and had a really good car, I might even be a fan. Because he's very aggressive. He doesn't take no shit. Especially for a driver that's basically part-time. Uh, and and you can even see when, when, when Busher looked like he had him, he like came right back. He knew he was in the... He knew he, 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 he was in big trouble. But he still... He was not going to let Busher make it easy on him. And But Busher had him. And he finished him off. And I thought that was awesome. Even though he's not a playoff driver. Neither one of them are. Uh, so there was a lot to like there. On, on the other hand, I, there's a part of me that's like, well, this is really just fucking weird. I mean, this whole race, all this craziness going on. I mean, qualifying was a mess. Uh, you know, it, it just didn't make any sense. And then the race really didn't make any sense. I mean, I'm looking at most of this race. I'm like, who would pick these drivers besides Van Gisbergen? Who, who would pick these guys? That most of the drivers that were still up there in the top 10 that last like half of the race. So it was just a very weird couple of days at Watkins Glen. But I, I completely understand if, if you loved what you saw and thought it was, uh, you know, a very, very exciting race. Yeah, I thought it was a good race. Uh, but just looking at the finishing order, you're, you're scratching your head. Uh, it's weird for a playoff race, certainly. Um, you've got a non-playoff driver that won. Uh, you've got a part-time driver that finished second. Um, third was Carson Hosevar. Zane Smith finished <laughs> in the top five. Corey LaJoy finished in the top ten. Ryan Priest finished in the top ten. The highest finishing playoff drivers were Chase Briscoe and Austin Sindrick, and they were the only two that finished inside the top ten. It was like um, 
that first lap crash, the weird qualifying, like you said, just set up this really weird kind of race where uh, you had a whole bunch of really good cars that were trying to come from the back and probably ended up just getting caught up in that first lap crash and then having problems throughout because there were plenty of cautions throughout and everybody ended up having some kind of trouble here or there. Uh, but those those late restarts on uh, a road course with the strategy, the way that it plays out and the ability to, you know, Hosevar in particular, like he played the strategy perfectly. They made the call to stay out, kept on, kept him on old tires. Uh, he was able to make ground or at least not lose ground on the old tires. And then when the next caution came, he got right back on cycle and was able to maintain his track position. And that's why he finished third. It was a, it was just a brilliantly called, called race for that team. I think Shane Van Gisbergen, when he comes to the series full time next season, um, he's going to be a monster. Um, we knew that from last year after Chicago as well. Uh, but Chris Busher, he's been close a couple of times on the road courses. So I agree. I think it was tremendous that he took advantage of the opportunity that he had. Um, I think if it was his first time being up there potentially for the win on a road course, I don't think we get the same kind of aggression. Uh, but being that he finished second at least once before in a road course and probably should have won um, you know, he wasn't going to let this one get away and you could see that it was a really cool ass lap. Uh, so when Van Gisbergen goes full time, how does that work next year? Is that still with colleague, right? As far as yes, it, it will still be with a uh, colleague. So he'll come up, um, and obviously banking on exactly like he did with Xfinity. Um, he, uh, after <laughs> shocking everybody with the win, not shocking, but you know, shocking, I guess. Uh, everybody with the impressing everyone that's the word i'm looking for with the win last year in chicago uh, it was pretty much near certainty that if he wanted to come to the season that there'd be a, a spot for him so this year came over to xfinity um he's won a handful of road course races exceptional in the playoffs um exceptional performance and is in the playoffs as a result of that so banking on the same thing uh, next year after the xfinity experience very different cars but certainly his ability to shine through on these ones as well. So I think he's going to be, well, I know he's going to be one to beat on the road courses all next year when he's in the car full time. And then we'll find out, you know, just exactly whether or not he has the talent to be more than just that uh, exactly. road course driver, yep. because uh, that's not, that's just not going to do anything for his career. Um, and it'd be nice, but it's just not going to do anything that will make him, uh, you know, anything special. So, uh, but I can't imagine if that that he does. I mean, he, he appears to, to 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 be the type of driver that has the goods. So we'll see what happens. Again, it is call so We got to keep that in mind. Um, but we'll see what happens. He's, yeah, and he's had some pretty good races on restrictor plates too. So in the draft, um, maybe he you know starts the full time Cup Series kind of like an Austin Sindrick, where we knew Sindrick has got the road course skills and he's also got the super speedway skills. I think. Van Gisbergen is showing both of those. So I think the first place he's going to get it certainly are the Daytona, Talladega, and Atlantas of the of the world. And then we'll see what he's able to do at a place like Bristol or maybe a Martinsville or something like that as we go along. Should be interesting for sure. Yeah, and Carson Hosevar. Uh, by the way, uh, Hosevar and Barry, they're the top two rookies, right? Yes. And is Barry... Is he definitely going to – who do you think? Because I know Barry seems to – even though Hosevar, I believe, has got more points than Barry. Mm -hmm. Barry yes. but, but a lot of this has come because Barry's really tailed off lately, and Hosevar has actually gotten better at the right time. I mean, no way you would have thought this would have been a race for the Rookie of the Year about two months ago. Yeah, and Hosevar is sitting at uh, 22nd in the points, 526 total points. Josh Berry down in 24th, 481. Uh, like you said, Hosevar, his past five races have just been really good. I think three out of the last five have been finishes of 11th or better, and four out of the last five or 16th or better. Somebody can check me on the stats exactly, but that's what I've got in my memory. Uh, very recently, Hosevar has started figuring things out and is getting those good results. So I think there's a lot more yet to come from Hosevar. But as far as next year, uh, Barry's rides locked up with Joe Gibbs Racing and Martin Truex Jr.'s vacancy. Let's talk about Bristol. So Bristol Motor Speedway, Saturday night. And uh, let's pop up the odds for the race and uh, there you go. We got, uh, let me see if I can actually make this a little bit. Where is this? So oh, it's already kind of, that's better. 
Try to go for it a little bit bigger. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So there you well, really you got these three, Hamlin, Larson, and Bell as the as the top three. And that really um, is no surprise. They should be the top three. But I don't know. I get the feeling that if Kyle Larson had Denny Hamlin's stats, that he'd probably be three to one. Maybe even two fifty. Because Denny Hamlin is is the favorite and should be the favorite. Uh, it, it just shouldn't even be a, a discussion. Even though Larson has been strong, and, and, and we'll get into his stats in just a minute. But look, we're going to be talking about uh, Richmond, Martinsville, Bristol. Those are the three shorts. And then we also have Dover as the concrete. And Denny Hamlin has wins at Bristol, Richmond, Dover. Uh, so he's got three wins out of the four tracks, one here, one very convincingly. He led 163, and he was by far the best car earlier this year. So he's got all of that, uh, and um, and yet he's only a point better than Larson and Bell. Um, I'm just guessing that that's because he's, first of all, he's not hot right now. Uh, second of all, he's just not Kyle Larson, and that's like Las Vegas' boy. You know, so if, if again, I just think Larson would, would be a lot uh, higher up here or lower up here, depending on your point of view. Even though, keeping in mind, Larson in, in all four races this year, two runner ups, a third, and a fifth out of those tracks. That's very strong, but still no wins. That's because Denny was winning them all. And then Larson only has one win at this track, but he has nine top tens in his last 10. Six of those top fives, three of those runner-ups. The win was in 2021, and he led at least 17 laps in all nine of those races where he's a top 10 or more, 17 or more laps minimum. So, yeah, that's why I can understand a little bit why the odds are the way they are because uh, – but Denny is just clearly the favorite and should be. And by the way, I just don't think Bell should be next to these two guys. I think Bell should be maybe six, maybe seven – um, forget Gibbs. We'll get into him in a minute. But I, I just think it should be Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson kind of on a stratosphere by themselves. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, look back to the beginning of this season and the short tracks were where Denny Hamlin was dominating. And yeah, Kyle Larson was good, but Lar uh, Hamlin dominated and won all of those races. He's won the last two on the concrete at Bristol last fall and then this spring again. Both of those, he led more than 140 laps. So uh, that's just terribly impressive but then when you look at larson clearly should be the second favorite and he's finished sixth or better in the last five uh concrete races here at bristol excluding obviously the dirt ones for all these conversations and he's led laps in every single one of those and it's not just one lap it's been like 20 plus laps each time so not the domination of hamlin but larson is very good here <clears throat> Both of them, uh, based on la based on the Watkins Glen uh, results, need something good to come out of this week. Hamlin, especially, he's sitting 13th in points behind Gibbs. There's only six point gap uh, to safety and being able to advance. But uh, you got to believe at a place like Bristol that uh, Denny Hamlin's going to come through and not just advance, but likely do it in style potentially with a win. Yeah, let's take a look at those standings. So there you got Logano, of course, is moving on. And then you've got uh, Bell, Cindric, Bowman. They're all in good shape. So is Suarez, Reddick, Elliott, Blaney, uh, Larson, and Byron. So it looks like it's going to come down to you got Briscoe and Gibbs. They're on the bubble pretty much. And then moving on over, can you believe Denny Hamlin is sitting there on the outside uh, where if something were to happen, it's a short track. If something were to happen. I mean, if anything were to happen to Denny Hamlin in this race to knock him out for any reason, then you just know. I mean, it's just because it's just, it's just it shouldn't happen. Uh, so you just know that it's, it's just luck involved there and that none of the good kind. And then you got uh, Kozlowski. Look, we all know Burton's done. Uh, so you've got Hamlin, Kozlowski, Truex is probably done as well. Uh, so, yeah, one of these two drivers, uh, Kozlowski and Hamlin, uh, may not make it, even though that's all, that's not a lot of points differential between Briscoe, Gibbs, Hamlin, and Kozlowski, especially Hamlin and the other two. It's it's not that much, only twelve points difference. But um, do you think Kozlowski, like, what happens if he does not win? If if let's say he finishes in the top five, what, what do you? And, and let's say he accum, accum, let's say he picks up some uh, stage points. 
uh, what are his uh, what are we, what are his chances? What does he need to happen? Because Gibbs has been pretty strong. We'll get into him in a minute. Briscoe, it could happen either way. But what does he have to do if he doesn't win the race? Well, the tight you you said that the points battle is extremely tight. So if you look at um, uh, say Keselowski there, fourteenth at two thousand thirty seven points, you're within forty points all the way up to Chase Elliott in seventh. So if Keselowski has a good day, gets stage points, finishes in the top five in the race, all he needs is one of those 12, uh, you know, probably from, well, I'll call it from, let's call it Blaney on back. So say Blaney down to Gibbs, he needs one of those um, four guys to, to have a bad day and, and exit early, not get stage points and finish, you know, in the 30s or a DNF. And if that happens, uh, Kozlowski goes through if he's getting stage points in the top five for sure. It's a very tight points battle. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think back to past years. Um, I mean, how number one, how many times have we seen Denny Hamlin below the cut line? Almost never. Uh, but then on top of that, you've only got, <laughs> you've got six points separating uh, Gibbs and Hamlin from uh, and Briscoe right on the bubble there. And, and those are three drivers that you would think, you know, prior to the start of this would have been advancing, but you've got Austin Sindrick now sitting up there in third. Yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. And Alex Bowman, like we said uh, last week, he could potentially sneak something out. He's up there in fourth, uh, looking pretty comfortable too. Yeah. Uh, look at that. Larson ninth, Byron 10th, Blaney eighth. I mean, it's crazy. It's just, uh, uh, but the bet this is, this is the system. And this is actually why there are definitely two points of view. One is you got the purists who just hate, hate it, hate it, hate it. Uh, and then uh, it's just the way that it is. It's, it's the it's it's just the times. It's all you can say. See, I think there are other sports that do screw things up a little bit more. Um, so I think it could be <laughs> worse. <to> <laughs> yeah, but I think it's, I think it actually is. I think it can be worse is my point is that it just can. Uh, it's true. That's true. Sadly, but that is true. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> it's look, you know, uh, at least it's set up that if, you know, you, you got to race well, I don't know what else to say. And if you, if you have two or three bad races in a row at the wrong time of year, well, I don't know. I don't, you know, it's. That's that's the way it is. So uh, it's not like you're getting screwed over anything. If you, 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 you know, if you're, if you're a driver like Denny Hamlin and you get knocked out of this round, that means that you didn't perform well at all for almost a month. Well, it's playoff time. If you can't perform well at playoff time, why should we be, you know, pointing fingers at the system? I mean, you know. So yeah, good point of view. So and and look, Larson's in the same boat. If something would happen to Larson early on Saturday night or any of these guys. So, yeah. All right. Let's, uh, okay, let's, yeah, let's get out of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the odds again. All right. So, oh, yeah, as far as Bell and then Gibbs even. So, Bell, look, he's never won here. And I think he did have a win in uh, Xfinity and a runner-up. So he, 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 you know, he came into the cup feeling good about the track. And he has three good runs since the next gen. Fourth, third, and tenth. And he led 187 laps from the pole two years ago. Last year, excuse me. Fourth, two years ago, leading 143 laps. This year, though, out of the four races, he does not have a top five. And you want me to put him with the same odds as Larson and Hamlin, and I just can't do that. And and that's why I just that's the thing that bothers me the most about Bell is not the fact that I don't think he could win. It's just I just don't think his odds should be next to Larson and uh, Hamlin's. Yeah, four top tens out of six tries. Uh, twice he's led more than 100 laps at Bristol, um, so he's certainly fast. Um, but he's not. He doesn't have the history of. Uh, of a Hamlin winning multiple races. And, and I agree. There's not a big enough discount, even Gibbs. I mean, I was thinking about Gibbs on Sunday during the race. Um, he's in one of the best cars in the series. He's now almost done with his second full-time season and he has yet to win a race. Um, yeah. Like why, why on earth should he be below Brad Keselowski 
who's got and and you know throw the car out of the question because obviously the Gibbs car is a better better car but Keselowski's won at Bristol three times shouldn't they be a little bit more close together I mean you're getting three points from almost four from Gibbs to Keselowski is somebody who's won three times and then even Busher Busher won last week and we know it's really tough to win back to back but the last person that won at Bristol on the concrete besides before Denny Hamlin was Chris Busher so Gibbs has yet to win a race in this series and you're talking about one of the hardest tracks to potentially win at um place that almost anything can go wrong and yeah he's been good at it but he still hasn't won so both of those guys um I I don't I would need a bigger discount to be able to go with either one of them. Yeah, I think Gibbs should be like 15 to 1, uh, double, uh, 8 to 1. No, no way. Uh, again, look at the other tracks 16th Richmond, 19th Martinsville, 10th Dover, 9th here. He doesn't even have a top five at any of these tracks this year. Yeah, he's led laps, but come on. I mean, that's not that, that's what that's why it's a tough track. You got to do more than just lead laps early in, in the race. You get it's, it's, it's a longer. Uh, race at a harder concrete track that it's more than just getting off to good starts so yeah it's it's mind-boggling keep in mind uh he did not win in the xfinity series at this track either uh, even though he had a couple of good runs but no wins that's ever a, at this track a really important point because he he won a lot of xfinity races obviously much more successful there than in cup series so far and not to say he's not going to win, so don't come out hating me or anything. Uh, but yeah, if he's not, if he didn't get the job done at this track in Xfinity, and like you said, no top fives on those com- comparable tracks so far this season, absolutely no reason that he should be uh, eight to one. Yeah, I, I and, and look, I thought he was going to have a really good year. I, I thought he was definitely going to win. I mean, he may still this year. I thought so too. Yeah, yeah I, I thought so as well. Hasn't worked out so far. All right. So then, like you said, uh, you got the the, the uh, partners here. Kozlowski and Bush are next. So, yeah, Bush are one uh, on Sunday. So uh, I'm wiping him out this week, even though 7th, 4th, and 1st since the next gen. So he really has taken to the to the next gen at, at Bristol. Kozlowski, meanwhile, has gotten better in each of his next gen. He went from leading 109 laps uh, a couple of years ago, finishing 13th and 8th. Last year, third in March. Uh, he does have an eighth at Richmond this year and the third at Bristol in March. And like you said, he's got the three wins. And, you know, he definitely wants to win this race. So um, I, I really like him, uh, actually, because of that. And then you've got Byron, Blaney, and Logano at 15 to 1. I don't think Blaney uh, or, or uh, you know, Blaney and Logano, I'm not so sure that they, they should be here. Um Maybe they're fifteen to one because they're in the playoffs and they're skilled drivers and they've had some success here. Logano's got a couple of wins, uh, but uh, Blaney uh, has not had the success he's had since the next gen. He 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 actually won a race in the Xfinity Series here. Uh, he had some decent runs here, uh, but then since the next gen, he's had a couple of moments in the three races, but not enough. And so that worries me a little bit. But he was fifth at Martinsville, seventh at Dover. Logano was second at Richmond and sixth at Martinsville. Um, and uh, Byron, meanwhile, he won at Martinsville. But, and this is a big but, I don't know if I'd have him at 15 to 1 either. I, him and Blaney, I might I might put it more like 18 to 1 because I, I think there should be some consideration in the fact that Byron's raced here 10 times in the Cup Series and never let a lap. <laughs> that is a fantastic point. Uh, certainly out of the bunch from the 11 to 15 crew, I'm taking Brad Keselowski and William Byron, but I, I would definitely put Keselowski uh, ahead of him because keselowski has got the demonstrated success. He was really good here in the spring. Um, it, plus, I think Keselowski is in a, a more do or die situation in the playoffs. And like you said, he really wants to win. Uh, Byron, though, his best finish is third, uh, which he did twice, 2021 fall race and then the spring race, or I guess the fall race in 2022, because it was the spring race was on the dirt then. Um, but yeah, like you said, never led a lap and average finish of 17.4, which isn't horrible. Uh, but yeah, you should probably getting should be getting a little bit more of a discount. Uh, despite that, uh, Keselowski and Byron would be my choices out of this bunch. Yeah, I think these odds are the way they are because they're bona fide playoff drivers and 
Blaney's a champ and Logano's a champ and Byron is maybe close to being a champ, so they're getting some respect with the odds there. Okay, then you've got Truex. Uh, you got this next group here. And I, I, I do think there are a couple of bargains here now because there are a few drivers that we, we felt that the odds were a little bit short. Now we're getting a little bit of uh, some breaks here. And we're going to start with Kyle Busch because, again, and I'm and look, he, he was screwed up like, like the other guys on Sunday pretty quickly. So uh, and it was, you know, I, I don't think that should impact his momentum or at least it shouldn't. Uh, so you take a look, though, and I and I I know the biggest issue for me is definitely the fact that since the switch to the next gen, he has not fared well here. Um, matter of fact, he's only led five laps in his last four appearances here for a driver that has led close to twenty six hundred laps in his career. So that worries me a little bit. But I I just like the fact that again they're 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 racing better, which means maybe they fixed a whole bunch of things, and he's just more comfortable in the car now. Both the fact that he's driving a new you know Chevy. And the fact that he's, you know, it's the next gen. So, you know, who knows? Maybe that, that's just everything now is about to change. We don't know, but it could. And that's why I'm willing to take the chance at 17 to 1 for a driver that has eight wins at the track and did have a fourth place finish at Dover, uh, another concrete track. So I like the 17 to 1 for a driver that's been racing the hottest of his season uh, uh, at 17 to 1. And then the other bargain to me, as a matter of fact, I think it's a major bargain. I even think it's better than Kyle is Chase Elliott. I don't have any idea what Chase Elliott is doing at eighteen to one, but I'll take it uh, because Elliott is on the his best three race stretch at Bristol in his career have come with the next gen, eighth, seventh, and second. And if you look at it, his racing this year on these tracks, eighth, of course, in March here. Fifth at Richmond, third at Martinsville, fifth at Dover. So this has been as as good a, 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 a track series for Chase Elliott as any uh, this season. And so, uh, so the only thing that I would be a little bit concerned with, but hey, I'm getting eighteen to one, so not much, is the fact that even though he's done really well in these last three races with the next gen, he's only led five laps. But hey, I'm getting eighteen to one. I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, he also, by the way, has a 6.6 .6 average in five Xfinity Series races. So this is just a good track for Chase, uh, even though he's never won, ever, at Bristol. But you're getting 18-1 to 1 for that, and, and I'll take it. Yeah, uh, you got to throw Truex out. Just <laughs> Yeah, that's why I didn't even talk about him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know at this point what, what could go right for that guy. Unfortunately, um, and quite honestly, he's he's never won at Bristol anyway. So, uh, yeah, he led 54 laps and finished second in the spring. But um, I, don't I know, was a I different Martin Truex Jr. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> completely agree. So I do think I completely agree with you. I think the two values here are Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott. I think the even better news about Kyle Busch is that you remember back into the spring race, we had all those tire issues. So for some reason, the Goodyear tire, like failures galore, like everybody had to pit. I, I think Goodyear actually ended up issuing all the teams an additional set because so many were failing. Uh, and it was like a nonstop caution fest that whoever was able to manage their tires the best through like 20 laps or whatever it was before they started blowing up was going to get the win. And that was Denny Hamlin. And I think Truex benefited from that. Like you said, Truex is a different, um, different driver then than he is now, certainly. But same rubber coming back, same surface, more experience, better understanding his car, racing better, good organization that can take advantage of the knowledge. Kyle Busch takes all of those boxes and he's been spectacular at Bristol. So I think Kyle Busch doesn't get bit by the same issues that he experienced in the spring. He ends up having a significantly better race, potentially even in contention for the win. And I think the same thing is true from Chase Elliott perspective, even with all of the issues, Elliott started fifth and finished eighth and led five laps in the spring. So, you know, he's already got it down. 
he's like a top 10 machine at this track. He better be in your fantasy rosters. Uh, if not, um, you know, he's a great value on, on a play for the win as well, though. But uh, certainly of this bunch, Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott, and quite honestly, both of those guys probably the best on the board so far. I like it. All right. Uh, and uh, as far as the others, by the way, uh, Reddick does have a 6.0 average in five Xfinity Series races with a runner-up and a win. But he just has one top five in the Cup Series and led only four laps in six races. And he hasn't fared that well with the next gen either. Uh, and then Barry, um, he actually uh, was a, a pretty good uh, 12th this year because he started second and led 25 laps. Uh, Briscoe, meanwhile, uh, as we move on here, uh, he's he'll start the next group at 35 to 1. Uh, he had a lot of success in Xfinity Series here. Uh, he's got a couple of runner-ups. He's got a win. Uh, not a lot of laps led, but results were good. Hasn't been able to show that in the Cup yet, but only four races, and two of them were top 15s, and this is just not a track. Again, another reason about Gibbs. Gibbs is a perfect example why we're not jumping all over him is that you need experience here, and that helps a whole lot. And Briscoe, um, you know, he's at least had some um and, 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 and the differences between him and Gibbs is you get an 8-1 to one with Gibbs and 35-1 to one with Briscoe. So that's why I'm a lot more apt to say, hey, you know what, maybe I'll throw a little long shot money on Chase Briscoe. So I think he's he's got a shot as a long shot. Uh, obviously not a top pick, but out of this group, I, I would say uh, Briscoe would be at my top. And Bowman... Uh, would would be interesting uh, because he was fourth this year and also had two top tens at Martinsville and Dover. Has three top fives in his career at Bristol. So, th- but the big thing is you're getting forty five to one. So, I- I'm I'm willing to go Briscoe one, Bowman two, and maybe even McDowell three. Yeah, I don't disagree with you at all. I think Chase Briscoe is certainly riding a high. He's in good position to be able to advance in the playoffs as well. So uh, if he just comes out and has a solid night, that that's really all he needs. So the pressure is off. And then look at, uh, you know, how he got into the playoffs. It was another track where he was really good in the Xfinity series. So I think that confidence is building within him and, and he can go forward. Chastain, unfortunately, this is one of those tracks where Chastain just historically has not performed well at. So there's very little hope that he's going to magically turn things around this weekend. So you can pass over him. Alex Bowman, interesting. He's been up and down. But like you said, he's got the three top fives, four top tens. He finished one of those top fives was obviously in the spring when he led three laps. And he came from 29th to be able to do that. So again, similar story to Elliott, same tire, same surface knowledge of the issues from the spring i think bowman could potentially do even better um this week so i think bowman is a a logical good choice wallace i think he's only got one top 10 here if i'm not mistaken and then michael dowell's mcdowell has actually been pretty good here on occasion as well so i think um of the three briscoe bowman and mcdowell and i'd probably put them in that same order yeah chastain i mean it was it was funny that chastain and uh and 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 and, uh, truex were at the front last week because those are the two Drivers where you went, oh yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, at first it's, it doesn't matter. They're not they're not going to win this race. It's just it's just there, there's no way. <laughs> yep. And, and and so if if they're not going to win in that situation, you know why would you think they're going to win a race this year? So, um, but by, by the way, McDowell he had an average of twenty seven point two in twenty five career races at Bristol. That's pretty bad. But his but his next gen results, his average is nine point three. He's finished eleventh or better in four of the last five Bristol races. Yes, McDowell knows what he's doing at this track, and yes, McDowell can be in the top ten. And you never know what can happen. You know, look at the spring race, and it is Bristol, so anything can happen. And we know McDowell can sneak race wins as well. All right, let's move on to the uh, the rest of the group. Hunter Nemechek was third last year in the Xfinity Series. Um, that's about it for him at this track. No way. He's too young, uh, too inexperienced. And then the rest of this group, just taking a look uh, at the odds, I- I'd probably say the the ones that would stick out for me. Uh, Gregson, of course, has two Xfinity Series wins, so keep that in mind. Jones also has two Xfinity Series wins. Uh, Dylan's got one Xfinity Series win, but he's never led a lap in 18 Cup races. 
Uh, Sindrick has not fared well. Suarez hasn't fared well that that much as uh, either, and they're both, uh, of course, playoff drivers. So, yeah, n none of these guys uh, really interest me, except, um, uh, you know, if you're thinking about a top 10 fantasy, I don't know, maybe you, you'd want to look at uh, a Jones or a Gregson based on their experience of winning here in the Xfinity Series. But other than that, I just don't see much. Yeah, I would agree. I think uh, Gregson would have been the one that I would have put out uh, just because he, I think he suffered from the issues of the spring, ended up finishing 34th, didn't really qualify well either though, 22nd. So it remains to be seen if his Xfinity experience and success is able to translate to the Cup Series here. I think it could. Uh, the question is just whether or not it'll happen this weekend. But of that bunch, Gregson probably would be the one I'd throw my hat to. Uh, I wouldn't disagree if you went for Jones though either. All right. Now, uh, as far as uh, some track trends to keep an eye on, and it's important because it's Bristol. Six of the seven winners here started in the top five. So, yes, qualifying is going to be very important here. The winner out of that group uh, that did not start in the top five was Chris Buescher. He started 20th. Um, and speaking of that 20th mark, if you think about it, since 2005, only one winner has started outside the top 20. And that was Kevin Harvick starting 24th in 2016. So if you want like a line to draw after qualifying where you just go, no, I don't care who it is, not taking them, then it's it's the top 20. Anybody 20 under, give them a shot if you want. Anybody 21st and over, forget it. Um, and then you've got the last 22 winners 14 of them have started in the top five with five pole sitters. As far as the uh, makes, well, Chevy's been pretty good lately, but not here. Just one win in the last 11, but that was Kyle Larson in 2021. In that same stretch, Toyota has six wins. Ford has four. So there you go. It's saying this is the week to favor Toyota and Ford. Chevy... You know, you're always going to give Chevy a look with the Larson and an Elliott and a Byron and a Bowman, but just keep an eye on the fact that they've only won once in the last 11. That's all. All right. Let's take a look at the futures because we only, again, this is cutoff time. So the, some, some of these drivers are going to be eliminated. Let's see what they, how, they're, how they're breaking this up. So they still have Denny Hamlin at 5-1. to one. How insane is that? Who would put money on Denny Hamlin? Now, look, I know he's, he's a big favorite this week, but I just, that'd be crazy. If you don't already have Denny Hamlin, this is not the week to put money on Denny Hamlin. Wait, <laughs> wait till next week. You missed the boat. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Who else? Blaney's 6-1 to one now. Byron and uh, Byron's still getting a decent number at 8. Logano's still getting a, a, a good number at 12. And, and you're still getting good long shot money from Bowman. Uh, th this would probably be the one that I would I would do. You got Kozlowski at forty to one, and if he could sneak his way in to the next round, then that's a really good uh, that's a good spot to be in. So, how about you? What are you thinking about these futures here? I'm surprised that um, somebody like a Briscoe, who's really heated up the past couple of weeks, is a hundred to one next to put a buck on him. Exactly right. Like he's racing better now than probably ever in his entire career. <clears throat> Why not go for that at 100 to one? But yeah, if you're right, of the long, cer certainly the cer big long shots, Kozlowski would be the one I would look at. Denny Hamlin, uh, I don't know who's putting money on him right now at five to one. <laughs> I have no I, idea. Maybe only only if you haven't put anything onto him at this point, and I, if he wins, he's he's going to be three to one. Is he going to be equal to Kyle Larson again at that point? Four to one? Do they both go, or do they both move to three to one? And Bell stays at four. I don't know. I mean, even Larson, the fact that he's four to one, that he has yeah. one slip up on Saturday night, he could be eliminated. Why? Absolutely. You should, look, if you're going to take these guys, even if you lose a little bit, you're not going to lose a lot. Larson or Hamlin, they're not going to go from 4 to 5 to 1 to 2 to 1 after this race. And if it happens, then just tell Vegas to keep keep their money. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen. So, yeah, just wait till next week. Just make sure that they get through this round. So Agreed. And, and I'm willing to lose a point over it. Okay. 
Let's now. Oh, let's get picks. So who are you gonna go with? Uh, top pick. Are you gonna go with the short money, or are you gonna go with the bargains only? What are you gonna do? I'm actually gonna put. I'm gonna put Byron. Oh. As a top choice. Wow. And How about that. Then Mr. I will take... never let a lap in the Cup Series is going to go out and win a race. <laughs> but, hey, he's got experience now, so it only has to experience. happen once. And he's been so good in the past few years in the playoffs. It's got to connect with him at some point, and that's kind of why I'm thinking uh, Byron, if not this week, certainly next week. Um, hey, you're getting 15 to 1. Yeah, exactly right. And then um, I think further on down, I how could I say no to, to Kyle Busch? Jeez. <laughs> that's a no-brainer and then uh your long shot then from a long long shot let's uh hmm briscoe i'll put i'll put it um put it right there he was a long shot right yep For 35 race. to 1 and there you go all right uh yeah you know what i'll uh let me go ahead and take kislowski then elliot and my last one, let's see. I'm going to throw someone in there or not. i tell you what, let's go ahead and uh, roll the dice with Bowman as my long shot. So Kozlowski, Elliott, Bowman. You've got Byron, Kyle Busch, and Briscoe. Uh, look, the, the, the problem with taking Hamlin and Larson is only one of them wins, and you gotta, and you, you got a 50-50 shot. You get flipping the coin is what you're doing. And that's always hard to do. So uh, sometimes, look, if, if if Hamlin was going well, then to me, it would be one of those races where I'd say, all right, this is one of those three times a year, I'll take a four to one shot. But he's just not going well. So I, I just, I can't do that. I agree. But, I think he's going to have so much on his mind of needing to get the stage points and needing to get the good finish. He doesn't have to win, really, if yeah, you think about exactly. it. Yeah, he's focused on points and make sure that somebody else has problems and it's not him. All right. So there you go. That's our NASCAR coverage. We are going to be next week. Is that Kansas next week? That's correct. And, and then uh, and then Talladega uh, is not that far after that, right? That's the next race after that. Right after that. And then we got another road course to close out that round. So it's a very similar um, situation to this round, except you're trading out uh, the short track of Bristol for a 1.5 mile oval in Kansas. Otherwise, you've got a super speedway and a road course. All right. And so we want to remind everybody, too, that our starting lineup show is going to be on Friday. So this I love this because there's not, not, I'm not I'm, I don't have to worry about. Uh, college football on Saturday, so uh, there's gonna. Uh, this is the only night race of the playoffs, right? It is. Yeah, one so. of the only night races of the year. Unfortunately, they got to bring them back. Uh, I don't know what the deal is with that. <clears throat> we so, need more. We need more. Yep. Uh, qualifying is going to be at five o'clock on Friday, so I should have a starting lineup report here on Prime Sports Network <clears throat> sometime around seven o'clock on friday night and then you've got the xfinity race by the way will be going on right around the time that i start my video uh or i post my video right around that time it's a 7 30 start for the xfinity race on friday night 